Welcome to this edition of Getting to Know, a series of interviews with ringers from Essex to find a little bit more about them, their ringing history and career and what they enjoy doing outside of ringing. Today we are getting to know Vicky Lefebvre. Hello Vicky. Hello. Hello, thank you for joining me. So Vicky, okay. give us a bit of background of, of who you are, where you ring and um, where you consider your home tower. I live in North End, which is about 10 miles north of Chubb, and I ring at Felstead. That's my home tower. And how long have you been ringing? 15 years. Do you remember much about when you started to ring? I think learning really been the second hardest thing that I've learnt to do other than driving, because so much of it has to be automatic um, before you can progress at all. Um, when you drive a car you've got to be able to steer it and keep it on the road before you can think about the windscreen wipers and the indicators and where you're going um, and ringing is much the same so much of it and, and I think it's probably harder when you learn as an adult because you overthink things um, when a child's learning to ring it just does as it's told I think um, anyway. your can you remember much about your experience of, of being a learner and, and being taught to ring what was that like Yes, I mean, it's, it's, it started very well. I learned at Felster, which is a nice short draft. Um, rang there for a few weeks, got the hang of it. That was fine. And then they asked me if I'd like the ringing school, which is what happened in the Northern District on a Saturday morning. So they took me to Finching Field, which uh, for anybody who knows Finching Field is a whole different kettle of fish to Felster because it's long, unguided ropes. So having thought that oh, I could do this, um, discovered that I couldn't. So it was it was good because the first term I had at the, that's six or seven weeks, I suppose, at the ringing school was um, taught me what I needed to know about pulling through straight. What would you say you enjoy most about ringing? It's a very social activity. You get to go around the country. I mean, well, I do because I do, as you said, lots of court appeal ringing. So um, um, with friends, but it's it's a cooperative thing. Um, so I find it very satisfying and you really don't get on terribly well unless everybody's giving of the best. So it's, it's, I think that's the occupation doing it with other people and, and the cooperation side of it. I enjoy. Um, you mentioned court appeals there. You've rung a lot of them. Do you know how many you've rung in total so far? Uh, something over 1600. Right. For those that don't know, perhaps, what is a court appeal? A court appeal is a quarter of appeal. Where, um, so it's um, around 1250, 1260 changes, depending on how many bells you're ringing on. Lasts about three quarters of an hour. Um, you can, so it it's, it's, gives you time to settle into the method. We learn a lot of new methods, or I do learn a lot of new methods. So you go and ring it for three an hour, which embeds it in your brain, um, or you ring different methods sliced together, which is also good fun. So. Um, but it's it's a longer piece of ringing. It's I, I find it satisfying because it gives you a chance to actually get into the ringing. Whereas if you ring just a, a, you know a, an extent or something or short touch, you don't really get to grips with it. Mm. Throughout your ringing career to date, what would you say is your greatest memory or your greatest achievement so far? My greatest achievement being of Norman Smith twenty three, which I did last year. Um, I. Greatest memory, if I can have one of those as well, we'll be ringing at Pershaw Abbey. Which have, have you rung at Pershaw? I haven't rung there. I have visited there, <laughs> looked up and said, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah. I didn't look down on the way up. I did on the way down. <laughs> so we be on one of, I, I go away in September most years with a group and um, ring appeals on the week. And we went to ring a court appeal at Pershaw. Um, and we only rang Bob Major because we didn't think we could cope with anything else. We're getting up on the, the platform. And, um, but for anybody that doesn't know Bershaw Abbey, you need to Google it and see where the, uh, where the bells actually are because the platform is suspended. I think they removed the floor years ago. Um, so it's, the platform is actually supported on two cross members up in the tower. But you have to go, uh, there is a, a gap around the edge of the platform. The platform is a cage all the way around to hold you in, but you go up over a bridge and stand on this platform and ring. Um, and it's a long way down when you look over the edge. So, so we 
crept down again. <laughs> That's fine. I've done it once. <laughs> in in amongst all of your ringing so far, have there been any incidences where things haven't quite gone according to plan? Oh, lots. Yes. I mean, we've had ropes break, clappers fall out. Um, we turned up to ring a quarter on six to discover there was no clapper in the treble. Um, but probably my most epic fail is I, I, I rung all these court appeals, but I'm not very good at calling. Um, I do it under duress. Um, but I was persuaded to ring, call a quarter of Primrose Minor. Um, Primrose is just Cambridge mucked about. It's sixth place Cambridge, so it should be easy in Cambridge. But I found calling it very difficult. Um, anyway, got through the court appeal, penultimate lead, um, and I hadn't looked at how many leads there actually were between the last call and it coming round. Um, and if you hunt through the lead end, you don't dodge at the lead end. So I looked at the bells and thought, oh, good, five, six dodging, three, four dodging, second, two making seconds, as it would be in Cambridge, but of course it's not. So I called that's all one lead too early. Um, so I haven't done it again. <laughs> and you and I both so, rang together fairly recently for a particularly special anniversary court appeal. Oh, we did, yes. We did, didn't we? Um, can you just remind us about yeah. that? <laughs> um, it was an anniversary of Queen Victoria. So we rang a quarter of Vickies with all Vickies. Um, and it was very enjoyable, I think. It went very well. And uh, it was good, good to mark the day. And I, I think it was actually one of the Vicky's birthdays as well, wasn't it? So, uh, six, yes, six Vicky's. Yes, so we had a, a toast afterwards. Indeed. In your um, early days, particularly, was there anyone that you considered was an influential ringer for you? Lots and lots of people have helped me. And I think, particularly, when you learn as an older ringer, a late learner, you, you rely very much on people being kind and, and helping you. Um, but I, I remember particularly Alan Barber at um, Stansted, because when I learned to ring at Felsted, we were very much a doubles tower. We couldn't, I mean, they taught me to ring Bob doubles, taught me to ring, taught me to ring Bob doubles, grants are doubles, but we really didn't have a band that could ring minor. So I went off to Stansted um, and Alan Barber was very, very kind to me and um, welcomed me into the group and taught me to ring Bob minor and, then give me other things to look at and learn this, go away and ring it. And we did. So he was, he was very good to me. Have you got any other bell ringing goals or ambitions, things you'd like to achieve in the future? We were having rung Norman Smith's 23 last year. We were actually um, looking at a, a composition with all leads different. So it's 23, you know, where you, you don't repeat leads again, which you do in the standard appeal. Um, I have a, a niggle at the back of my mind that I'd like to ring the 41 minor, but whether I could or not, I don't know. Whether I have the brain capacity to learn the methods, I'm not sure. Uh, but more, I mean, those are sort of separate things. I'd, I'd really like to do uh, more ringing on higher numbers because I don't get much of that. Um, six and eight are good. Tens, mm, okay. Twelve, no. But it would, uh, I would like to do something in the future would you say to other ringers to encourage them um, and enthuse them? Come and ring, <laughs> I think. Um, yeah, I mean, you just, people are, uh, uh, so many people have been kind to me and asked me, I mean, that's how I progressed is because people have said, oh, let's go and do so and so, oh, come and do this. Um, and I think you just need to pass it on. So, um, you know, if, if you want to ring something, ask around and people will help you. Um, uh, yeah, you just have to you know, see, see if people will, will come out and play or organise things yourselves. I mean, I organised court appeals days in the early days and got people that to come out and ring with me. Um, mm -hmm. Lots of people have come out and ring. Yeah. Okay. And what would you say to any non-ringers to try and encourage them up the tower to come and have a go? Come and go, have a go. Um, uh, yes, just come, come and have a look, come and see, come and try it. My wanting to learn to ring, I said wanting to learn to ring, I first heard about ringing or, or knew about ringing a long, long time ago when I was growing up because I was both a brownie and a guide. Um, and I did lots of badges. In fact, I was a Queen's guide, so I did an awful lot of badges. Um, but there was a bell ringer's badge and normally a book that had all the details of what you needed to do to earn these badges mm. would give you a list of things for each badge. 
And I looked at what you had to do to do the bell ringers badge, and I didn't understand the words because it had things like plain hunt, plain bobbed up, and uh, ringing up and down, and so on. And uh, as a youngster, I, was, you know, I wanted to know what they meant. I didn't like things I didn't understand. Um, anyway, I, at that time, I didn't go to a church with bells, so I didn't have the, the opportunity. It sort of lurked in the back of my mind for many, many years. And then it was when I moved, I had to move into the lady in the house next door was a bell ringer. So uh, I was, you know, she must have mentioned that she was a ringer and, and we started talking about it. And she said, well, oh, come up and see. Come up. So she took me up and, and that's where it all started. Anything unexpected that Reem has taught you over the years? Yes, there's lots of things up church towers you don't expect to be there. Um, and lots of interest really if you if you go up and look at the bells and you look at the inscriptions on some of them um, and it's not there for the outside world to see but it's it's been put there with great care um, for various people um, but also I think um, the bell ringers on the whole are very very kind and thoughtful people um, and it's when we go out on these court days the number of times we go to a tower and find that they've laid on tea for us um, so we've not, they've not just gone, you know, being kind to go and open up the tower so we can ring, but somebody's gone in with a kettle and a teapot and cakes they've made for us and so on. I mean, I, I just, you know, it's yeah, beyond anything, I think. I think that's just lovely. <laughs> now, a few years ago, you were on the uh, district committee for the Northern District. Can you tell us a little bit about yes. that and why you became involved on the management side of the, the district? I was actually treasurer for the district for about five years um, and I got involved because the treasurer at the time I was taken ill and couldn't continue partway through the year so conversation with somebody on a practice night who said oh you do sums don't you because I'm an accountant um, would you like to um, help us out for the rest of the year so I said oh yes of course I will I'll just you know I'll hold the reins until Pat's well enough to take it up again well sadly she never did so um, Come the ADM at the next year, <laughs> I was voted as treasurer, and um, I was I was then for the position for about five years. So, what else do you do outside of ringing? What other interests and hobbies do you have? Uh, well, I work. So I fit everything around that. Um, usual reading. I walk a lot. We do do quite a lot of long distance walking. Um, walk to Hadrian's Wall and part of the coast to coast. And in fact, we should have been, um, we were due to do the Dales Way, see, see a lot of places and you see much more when you walk than you do when you go by car. Uh, yes, you've got the time to. And, and you just get away from it all. It's quite nice when, when work's quite hectic and so on. It's just quite nice to go off for a week span and, uh, and do something completely different and uh, mm -hmm. see a bit of the, work, the countryside. Right. You mentioned you're working, um, you're walking, uh, and you're, you're travelling and, and what have you. How do you juggle ringing activities in amongst all of your normal day life? Well, I usually find, you know, you can find time for things you want to do, can't you? So, uh, um, yes, I mean, the, the, I work part time and the people I work for are very nice. And as long as I do the work and I put the hours in, then I can juggle my hours at work to go off on court appeal mornings or days or whatever I want to do um, and I've usually methods sitting on the desk in front of me at work that I'm learning while I'm sitting there so, but yes it all, all slots in quite yeah you know, it takes a bit of work but you can, you can find time for things you want to do. Thank you for sharing uh, information about you and your ringing um, is there anything else you'd like to finish up with any stories you'd like to share or pearls of wisdom? Well I don't know. I mean, I think it's, uh, um, as I'll go on again about this coming to ringing later in life, I just wish I'd picked it up earlier. I wish I'd been more proactive as a, as a kid um, when I saw what those badges involved and got hold of somebody and said, you know, take me to it, teach me, show me what it is, um, because it's, it's, it's harder as you're older. Your brain doesn't work as well. And I'm sure things you, anything you learn when you're a youngster, you just do it. And then it's a lie. Um, but I mean, it's, it's with good friends and um, a bit of ambition. Um, you can do not well, exactly all you want to do, but you can, you can go a long way. You can progress. Um, if, and people are very kind at giving their time to you. Uh, uh, 
Well, thank you very much for sharing your story with us, Vicky. Um, this is Getting to Know You, the series of interviews with Essex Ringers, and we'll see you next time.